picking the right social channels more than just the influencer or the content creator is crucial before you even start looking for people to work with you on your campaign. Now, our next guest is Naomi Eisted. Uh, she's an international fashion and beauty television presenter, entrepreneur, author, lifestyle influencer, and, uh, and, and content creator. Um, Naomi has been featured on some of the biggest platforms in the world, um, and we're really excited to have her. We know influencers is something that a lot of businesses and brands are reaching out to, and uh, she's one of the best. So let's introduce you, Naomi Isted. Uh, Hello. Hi guys and hello to everybody. Lovely hello, to you me. both tonight. Thank you, Luca, and thank you, Yossi, for having me this evening. I've been listening to everything that you've been saying, and it's so refreshing to hear this perspective. From my perspective, creating the content for whether it's TV or magazines or social media. Um, I think this is brilliant what you're doing because more brands need this understanding. And it's kind of like my brain while I've been listening is going ping, 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 ping. I need to say this, I need to say that. So you need to tell me to be quiet, guys. <laughs> very encouraging. It's very encouraging. Sorry, Yossi. It's very encouraging what you are saying because uh, when we decided to do this first panel discussion about brand therapy, um we we decided to have uh different we had the chance to have different guests and and we thank you uh from the the, the, the very deep of my heart of our heart because we uh, had the chance to have a very different kinds of guests because yeah. you are a content creator also oh, yeah. uh, but we also have uh, manager we had managers from yep. very big brands so the other side <laughs> the okay. other side of the of the communication yeah. um, and so it, it's very interesting also to uh, to have you also because the the influencers topic is very uh, it's very yeah, yeah uh, it's, it's, it's interesting very like everyone yeah yeah the, uh, the the so what's really great about having you as our final guest and, and we, we did this on purpose is because we you know we're talking about brand and brand values and you know social media platforms throughout this whole talk and obviously as an imp i mean you do a million things you're just amazing i, I love you to death oh, um, thank you and thank you for the beautiful introduction as well that was really really kind of you <laughs> yeah, i think i wanted to read that context because now we're getting into you know as an influencer you know this is this is pretty much where you know the brand and the communications you know, and, and that, that lifestyle, that kind of approach to culture and values, I mean, yeah. influencers are meant to embody that. And mm -hmm. obviously you're, you influence a lot of different um, niches and, 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 uh, and, and different parts of the market, um, which is amazing. So why don't we just talk a little bit about that in terms of, um, you know, let's just kind of get the ball going and talk about your experience as an influencer, you know, how you've seen the change since you started. Um, and let's, let's get the conversation going with you. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with the phrase influencer. Cut that out. No, <laughs> I, I, I've been creating content for 20 years. And I think sometimes that is a key thing for a brand to think about when they want to work. Sorry if I go off tangent as well, which I will do. Um, but I think when you're looking to work with brands, look to work with um, creators that understand your vision. That's what I wanted to sort of throw in there from the conversations you guys were having earlier on, is I think it's really important that you pick the right people that represent the demographic that you're trying to target and also understand your vision. Because I think my background is a broadcast journalist. Then obviously I progressed with the times and digital and media, it evolves. It's constantly evolving. And we're kind of like, oh, gotta keep up, gotta keep up, you know? And so obviously for brands, they're in the same position that that's not what they do. They've got their brand, but they have to keep up with their marketing and their media and their digital strategy. And that's, that's you know, it is difficult. Um, so that's where obviously people like all of us come into the equation and are there to sort of help brands and assist them grow. Um, but it is a very confusing arena. I mean, in the last, I sort of, um, I think I started out on Instagram because my background is TV and writing. So I started out on Instagram probably about eight years ago. 
and the difference now to then is phenomenal i mean my main thing was like twitter and then facebook and then instagram and i think um you've also got to look at the different boxes like you were saying about the different social channels i think you've got to be careful to work with someone that's only on a certain platform because then that is a very very um diluted potentially following so I think if you've got someone that's got quite a really great presence on Instagram but also they've maybe got an amazing YouTube fantastic um, and I also think that when it comes to sorry I'm getting carried away obviously no no no, no, no. <laughs> it's great it's great it's great I, I love this I think it's also really important to think about what you're looking to gain from your content um, from a consumer's perspective. So if you are like a toy brand, then TikTok or YouTube with young YouTubers is amazing. Instagram's not necessarily gonna really work for you. Whereas if you're a travel company, yes, Twitter, um, Instagram. And I think like you said, picking the right social channels more than just the influencer or the content creator is crucial before you even start looking for people to work with you on your campaigns. Agreed, yeah, um, but, agreed, but yeah, definitely the main thing that I've seen the difference is brands used to spend massive budgets on TV. It was all TV advertising, TV commercials. And like you said, now they can spend budget on content creators who have a following, a really good following. And actually you can even have like, with the, high, with the swipe ups, they can be swiping right up to the product. So if it's clothing or if it's um, furniture, interiors, influencers. So, and, and I think it's also really important to have a look at uh, who you wanna work with and really do your research on that influencer. So not just go, okay, we want, five women that are mum bloggers because five women that are mum bloggers can be totally different and one could be really really positive and one could be really negative and their output is, output could be completely different um so i think it's really taking a step back and going okay which platform suits our brand oh perfect let's work with those which types of people are right for our demographic if, for example, a fast fashion brand approaches me, I don't work with them. Sorry if we've got any fast fashion, fast fashion brands, because personally, that's not going to relate to sales for them. It's not relative to my lifestyle. I don't wear fast fashion. Right. I, would, so I would buy high street, high street and luxury and, and, and independent. Um, and so for me, um, I think if so, and I turn down quite a lot of campaigns I do because I just think it has to be authentic to my lifestyle you know yeah, your audience will see right through it right like they'll call bullshit and then you're, you're gonna lose all of your clout right because exactly. they, they're like oh she's trying to sell me I think that you know one of the, the things that I've noticed the most with influencers is that you know find, like you said and it's such a great point is that find an influencer that embodies your company values because then the content they create is going to be organic where they're odd, like when they, when the the, the yes. content creator, or the influencer, like when they when their audience sees the content, it's gonna make sense. It's not gonna feel like it's an actual. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something yeah. you do personally very well. And I think oh, we again uh, speaking about values because I think that as Naomi said, uh, it's very important for an influencer and a brand to share the same values. Otherwise, the yeah. communication. It's fake, like like Johnny said before. Uh, so it's very important not for a brand, for a company, um, not to be guided only by the number of followers or. You know, said. Yeah. So now, okay. So, so I, now, I've said this. Sorry to cut in, Yossi, but no, I've said this to brands a million times. I've said to them, you know. Don't look necessarily at, uh, if you're a luxury brand, don't look at a reality TV star with 2 million followers because their followers are probably about 10 or 12 or 14 years old. Whereas you might have someone with a, a smaller following, but a, quali a quality that they will like, Wealthy school mums. If you if you've got Chanel, for example, wealthy school mums are going to buy Chanel makeup. You're not going to sell Chanel Chanel makeup with a twenty year twenty year old reality star whose fan base is twelve or fourteen year olds. You know, yeah. and I think that's really crucial not to be. Oh, look, they've got ten million followers or two million followers. They may do, but they also may treat you like a number and not as 
oh my gosh, I'm passionate about this campaign. And I think passion has also got to be in there as well. So if it's a bigger campaign, so a lot of like um, listening to Giovanni was brilliant um, because I work with a lot of travel clients and I have done for years, the luxury sector. And again, where I've been approached by maybe kind of the 18 to 21 type of brands around the world, I've said, and even if the budget's good, I'll say, no guys, listen, it's not right for me. I'm luxury family travel, that fits my box that will it relate to sales for you um and there's no point in working with me i, no. I don't you know it's and i think that's really really important to work with people that you think yeah actually they're on brand yeah and i think that's a good point that you also mentioned in terms of you know a lot of people look at uh followers and you know before when they're choosing their influencer they just go straight to the number and they're like yeah. oh well you know and like you said the, the problem with that is that now you're not necessarily paying for the influencer. You think that you're paying for their reach because they have all this clout. But if the, if the, if the product doesn't fit, well, then all of that clout is just going to dissipate because everybody that's watching you isn't going to be about that. Um, something else that you mentioned really good is interesting is that, you know, along the lines of we're using influencers, you know, any we're pretty much all influencers to one form or another. Not, not everyone can make money doing that but we're all somewhat influencing. And it's like, you know, if you're a local hot dog stand, for example, then, you know, getting a macro uh, or a micro follower that has, you know, like it's a soccer mom and, you know, she, you know, you, you set something up with, with them and they only have 500 uh, followers, but you're this hot dog stand that they, you know, they take all their kids to that hot dog stand after soccer practice or after games. Well, yeah. that's, that's going to create business for you. It's not about, the you know it's about converting and i think that that's important um yes. so okay. what, one really great question i think is going to really help a lot of people and create a lot of value here um is you know what are the right ways and what are the wrong ways to work with an influencer like you know let's say that i find you i have a great product it's on brand with you it hits all your values and then we start the actual relationship what are the, what are some of the right way like best best practices and what are some things that people really need to stop doing? So everyone now is writing, is noting. Oh well, firstly, I know I'm I, sorry, I'm brutal, but I think I I really do think that you've got to think about don't do these one take wonders. I really think that you've got to look at longevity. So any relationship I personally get into with a brand, I don't really want to get in with into a relationship with a brand if it's going to be just like one random post. I don't think that's going to be helpful to the brand. I don't think that's helpful to me. I don't think my following would find that engaging or authentic. I think you should look at longer term strategies with the right people rather than having 40 different people to work with, actually narrow it down to maybe five or 10 that you can either be in a position where you're working with them every month or you're working with them every quarter and you know that they're on brand for you. So um, I tend to love working with brands that, first of all, when a brand comes to me, my first question is, does it fit my lifestyle? Oh, yes. I wear those coats, that style of, that style of brand. Yes, 100%. Or my children would use that. 100%. So if I think, first of all, it fits with my lifestyle, that's it. That's a tick. And then secondly, if a brand says, you know, we want to do one post with you, I'll say, do you know what, I, you know, thanks so much, but I really don't think that that's going to benefit either of us in the long term. So and I think it's also sure. you want to work with people that um, I want to work with brands that want to brainstorm together. So it's not a case of I've got an idea or you've got an idea. It's a case of we build, uh, uh, we brainstorm the campaign together. So of course, a big, you know, a massive big retailer um, that I work with, they will say, right, this is roughly, you know, this is the theme for these different times of the year. What are your thoughts? That is just beautiful because it's a creative relationship where you can say, well, actually, guys, I think blah, blah, blah would work really well. And they hadn't thought of that. And I also think it's very important to kind of get a, uh, I think it's really important to know that you're working with someone that likes to work with a brief. So however, even if a client wants the campaign to be quite very authentic and organic, you still as, a, as an influencer or a content creator need to have an idea of what the brand's vision is because an influencer's idea and a marketing director's idea could be completely different. So you could be talking about creating a recipe um, video series, for example, but the style in the in the mindset of the YouTuber and the Instagram, 
their our brains work completely differently. So I don't I don't fit in the YouTube space because I'm more of a broadcast journalist. So when I create video content, it's much more, you know, old, old school BBC, entertaining, informative, um, and you know, subliminally educational. If that that's a travel brand, or you know, if right. it's a educational brand, that kind of thing. So right. I think um, if you if you wanted like a really factual video, then you'd run that by a YouTuber. If you're thinking of working with a YouTuber, you have to run that brief by them because they could go, wait a minute, that's not my style. So I think um, I I love it when a client has a brief and when a client doesn't have a brief, it makes me so nervous. Okay, so you, like, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, so, I'm so when it comes to that, I'm so OCD because I want, I want the client to be so happy when I've created a video series or if I've created, uh, I've shot like loads of different looks for a fashion brand. I want to, I want to, to please that brand and know that we're working and, you know, we're right on the same synergy. Our mindsets right. are working in parallel. Um, so and here's, so, here's, so here's my question. Sorry to cut you off. Um, I just want to make right. sure, because it's something you said, and I just want to make sure that we don't lose that. Um, talking about how you work with these brands and how you select them. Now, you said you like working with briefs. Now, do you like working with briefs that tell you exactly what to do and how to do it? Or you just like letting them tell you roughly what they're trying to get and just let you have yeah. the fun with it? Yeah. So the way that I like to work with all brands is we'll have a rough brief exactly like that. So we'll have a rough brief that then I'll have a vision and then I'll talk to them about my creative vision. And I'll say, look, guys, that's what you're talking about. Now, this is what I'm thinking. And if it's kind of like partially a script, scripted style content, I will run a rough script by them because there's nothing worse for a content creator um, to then have to re-edit something five or ten times when the budget isn't relative to that. And you really want to know that you've ticked off all the boxes. And I don't know, I definitely don't want it to be like, this is a brief and you've got to follow it word for word. No, that's not, that's not creatively authentic. But I think, um, I think if they give you a, like a rough brief, you go to and back, to and forth, and then you say, right, I'm shooting the content on Monday. Um, if you've got any changes before then, please let me know. I think that makes for a beautiful relationship between a brand and a content creator. So you go, so you go, so you look at it and you go full, uh, and you go full collaboration mode, even though it's a client that's yeah. paying you, you're yeah. still very much like, listen, I understand it. We're both on the same page. We know that this is going to work. But yeah. from here until we actually execute, let's make this a collaboration, not like a, you know, yes and no kind of. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think a collaboration with an influencer as opposed to just paying them and then just closing your eyes on it is probably the best way. Definitely, definitely. Um, because I've, heard, you know, I have, I have heard horror stories of uh, maybe if you do have um, influencers that haven't maybe had any media training or background, that's where they'll, it will be a gray area. And for a brand, it will be a nightmare because they'll just be going to and from, to and from. They'll shoot the content. The brand doesn't like it. They'll shoot it. They'll shoot it. And that's why I think if, if an influencer or a content creator doesn't want to work to a brief, then you maybe need to say this. I don't know if this person's right for me because then you, you could be signed into a contract to pay them to deliver content for you. And they're not delivering you know the vision obviously it's not necessarily and sometimes as a brand guys you've got to be open to the creatives <laughs> because you may want to get your messaging 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 in there and that will turn everybody off on social media on instagram if it's like this is an advert this is an advert this da, 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 people aren't interested it has to be subliminal it has to be creative yeah. and the more creative the better to be honest because then yeah, when it's be authentic yeah i agree i mean i think that some of the best uh... oh sorry look i go so I was saying there are very good suggestions for everyone, also for also for me, also for uh, for my agency, because uh, because it, it's quite it's quite um, strange, Naomi. But um, also for an agency like mine, and I, I think also for for Yossi, um, it's better when you have a client that is coming to you, yeah. and of course he has a brief. Uh, but it's always better also for us, not only creating a specific communication action or a specific event, also for us and as an agency, it's more uh, challenging and intriguing uh, sharing with the client 
his communication plans, his communication strategy, knows yeah. about the communication strategy, also the marketing strategy, if it's possible, of the client, in order to create a better Campaign. communication action or communication plan or a better yeah. event. Because yeah. also for us, it's very, sometimes it's, it's quite sad. Okay, you have to do that. You have to- I know. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, and the thing is, uh, the brands are paying us to do what we're really good at. So I think brands need to be able to be open to the conversation and the discussion that I, I, I have said it quite a few times to, to my clients and then they appreciate it in the long run. I'll say, guys, that's horrendous. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> and they're like, well, but this is what our plan is. And I'm like, but you, that can be your plan. But if you exit, if we execute this, you're not going to get any engagement. Like, yeah. but trust me. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard for a uh, corporate sides of a business to understand like the, I've had it so many times, even when I've been doing like radio for um, brands and I've been representing them on radio days and they'll have their messaging. And I'm like, guys, honestly, if we use too much of this messaging, it is just going to like the listeners uh, will get cut off the radio. <laughs> We're not going to be allowed to continue because it will just be like, this is an advert. And it's um, because, you know, what I'm hearing is that as an influencer, you're, you also bring such a such an important level of uh, of market research, right? Because you know you're actually seeing all the reports, and you know you're you're kind of a part. You're kind of like a part of the business, in, in, like a part of that company in a sense. Because, and then you have so much as an as as a content creator and influencer. You know you have so much data that mm. you can then take to better your message with your next client. And you know I think that that's really interesting that the you know a good point for a lot of people if they want to work with influencers and content creators is that you know don't just trust them based on what they do but trust them based on what they know because they're seeing the numbers they're showing the reports to their clients like they know what works and what doesn't way better than a lot of these brands who are just starting out trying to find the best person and then being scared about what to do so i think that that adds a level of of of, of ease when you work with somebody at, at your level um that uh, that really understands the market not just the not just the game yeah i i, I do agree with you i think and so that it's hard to express to brands but the value in working with say for example people like myself and similar contemporaries that are like myself that maybe have a background as well in either editorial or tv we we maybe think more out of the box and so we can understand when a client's coming to us with a brief we think I, I think multifaceted so if a client comes to me I don't just think oh and like I'm going to shoot this on Instagram I think wait a minute that brand you know we could be doing stuff on a podcast we could be doing like a video series we could be pitching that to Netflix we could be doing da, 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 da. and I think it's really good if brands can invest in the right talent and they do a bit of research rather than just going boom let's do a massive influencer campaign right. I would say hold back and actually find like four or five key people and maybe in, you know, really different personalities, but that represent your brand in different ways. I think that's, I think that's really, really powerful because, uh, you know, um, for me, for example, if, a, it, you know, if a client's got a, a great message and we're doing like a video series um, and I tend to do a lot of video series, a lot of travel video series and um, we will we'll do the video series but then I'll also say you know like and then in two months time we can put those videos on my online you know online magazine and then also if you need that to be edited to a podcast blah 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 you know I think it's just really good to have these conversations to see uh, if someone is literally just going to take pictures for you, then, you know, that's fine. You know exactly that that's what they're going to do. They're going to shoot content for you that is solely pictures. And that's fantastic because there is a place for that as well. And then there's also, you know, I think I think it's just really understanding the, the right sphere for your brand. It's it's crucial before you approach anyone to work with anybody. For I mean, sure. it's, and, it's, yeah, it's, and you actually bring up a, a, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, we'll, 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 we'll start wrapping this up in a moment because we know you're busy and, and you have families and I really appreciate your time today. I'm um, enjoying it. <laughs> no, no, it's awesome. It's like, you know, I, I think that- I think a good glass of red wine and then I'll be fine. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say like, so you know, I think that it's really interesting, um, the space that you're really talking about, and we haven't really touched in on every platform, but you mentioned Spotify, um, you know, or po podcasts. And, yeah. uh, you know, just, to, just goes to show that, you know, 
every conversation we're having with different people that are, you know, pretty high up in, the, in their respective fields, especially today during our guests, you know, everyone's talking about different platforms. And I think that that is something that I've noticed a lot where, you know, people know what their niche is. They know the different platforms out there. You're not going to have one conversation that's going to be the same for every single person. And so, mm-hmm. you know, talking about podcasts, we haven't had a chance to, but, you know, that's really, really great too, especially as somebody who has as much clout as you, you know, there's a lot of, advertising going on on uh on podcasts right now as well like a quick little like intro message to introduce like so for example if you're um if, you, if you're working with a brand you can do a quick little like intro bit about them yeah and introduce your podcast and then i also know some people who actually don't do the uh the, the advertisement until the middle so yeah. they don't distract at the beginning and so there's 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 so much there and and, and you know really really appreciate it it's really interesting because um you answered I mean, I asked you one question, but <laughs> you were so thorough. Like, you know, literally, <laughs> right. was, how do you partnerships? What are the, you know what I mean? Like, um, how's it changed? The misconceptions people have. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, it, it, unless there's anything else, uh, one last thing you want to share. Um, I, um, I, I just think that um, now is the time to be on social media. You have to utilize it, guys. So look for the right platforms, look for the right people and get on it now because th- this time now, obviously things are going, like I used to pitch TV series after TV series to networks. Now it's pitching digital broadcast series. Everything's changing, everything's evolving, but stick with the platforms that are right for you and your brand. If you're uh, you know, a luxury furniture brand, don't be hanging out on TikTok. I just don't think it's necessary, for example. <laughs> And that's what and that's what it says, yeah. And and Yossi and Naomi, I, I would like to uh, to finish your to end up you did, did this your your speech and your um, your uh, discussion Maybe? with uh, with a question that we have from mm-hmm. from one of the, from one of the, part, of the participants that asked um, how influencers or content creators are paid normally. And I, I would I would like to to answer to this question that it's like to ask how much a car costs. Uh, it depends exactly. on the it's- model, the brand, the accessories, the yeah. performances that are required. Uh, so um, it depends it's- on. Uh, it, it depends on your experience. It depends on the level of platforms you've got. It depends on. Um, you know, it, I, I tend to, for example, if someone's going to ask me about, you know, when you're paying for influencers, that's why I like to work with longer campaigns, because actually I think that's more effective for brands. So instead of just paying for one off posts, I think plan a budget in your mind as a brand. So if you want to spend five grand or 20 grand or 100 grand, think to yourself, OK, I'll, you know, who am I going to work with and how can I utilize the most content from that person and who are the right people. I think that would be my suggestion when it comes to uh, budgets and that kind of side of it. Yeah, totally. And just one last thing to ask before we say farewell on this one is that, you know, don't, I think what a lot of people get a little bit intimidated by when they're working with influencers and content creators is that they assume that they all know what they're doing. And yeah. so, you know, I, what my advice is for a lot of people when they want to work with influencers, you know, I'm like, listen, you don't know what you can afford and what you can't unless you ask 10 people in the space because mm-hmm. once you, if you talk, if you go to the top people that you know are doing the best and you, you know, you send them off a message and you get two replies or one reply yeah. and you just say, oh, that one influencer responded to me and they said, this is their rate. So that's what it's going to be at that level. That's I it. recommend saying no, like go that's to five or 10, ask all, I mean, at the same level, at whatever level, like, you know, do the millions, do the hundred thousands, do the 10 thousands, mm-hmm. you know, send five to 10 messages off to each one of the people that you want to work with and then that way you can look at the 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 uh the responses you get and then say oh there's an average here or oh there's a trend yeah. here or, oh actually it is kind of the same um yeah. you know the, the, the this type of space is so new and i think that there's a lot of room there um for people not to be so intimidated to approach influencers but to actually get some information and, and to really understand who you're working with what they want if it's worth it for you right now maybe it's worth it for you you know like in in, in a little bit of time and you have to build but this is a big brand new space that people aren't familiar with. And I think that we all need to really ask the right questions in order to make the best decisions. 
Yeah, and I also think that's a brilliant point because I also think, well, personally for myself, I always think quality, not quantity. So that's the way I like to work. So I prefer to work with five quality brands rather than 25 brands, for example. And I think it should be the other way around with brands as well. Look for the right quality person to work with across the board. And also, like you say, quality can be more expensive. Um, so invest in your marketing. Don't go for the cheapest option because I know there's loads of people out there that might work for really cheap and that means that the quality of the content could potentially be really cheap. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, and listen. That's what I say to my clients, if they say to me, oh gosh, that's your rates, I'll go, uh, well, you get what you paid for. <laughs> you know quality, I mean? quality, not quantity, quantity, no, not quantity, not quality. Yeah, I've got it wrong now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quality, yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, but, like, and I think that, I think you brought up a good point and I think we'll end off with this one because I really do appreciate your time is that, you, you know, look at your marketing budget, look at your social media strategy, whatever that involves, and look at it as a long-term play because you're going into brand. Now, I think that that's what you mentioned where, it, you know, and I think, and I understand why you prefer a more long-term thing because you can actually gauge it. You can see the results. You can see what's happening. It's not yeah. one thing here, one thing here, because we go through so much content, but for example, if, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, we, we follow each other, but like, you know, if I'm following you and I see you post one thing, like, mm -hmm. okay, I mean, you're an influencer. I, you know, so I know that you're posting a bunch of stuff, but in the long term where you're randomly posting the, like, you know, more of that same collaboration, it's also yeah. getting you to know more about the brand, how you're exactly. speaking about it, how you're using it. Like, you're not just presenting me the brand. Over time, you're actually educating me on it, which actually makes the brand part for me, like from a business perspective, way more effective as exactly. I move forward with you because now I'm growing and developing and you're sharing my brand message and growing it with me as opposed to you just being like, sell this for me, sell this for me. Um, exactly and I think that's I, I think that's the key and I'm, that's why I love I'm so passionate when a brand comes to me and goes we want to work with you and we've got like we what, what about 12 months and I think fantastic because we can sit down together and creatively do really organic and authentic campaigns that just subliminally are part of my life and they see it regularly my followers see it regularly it's not pushy pushy it's not in your face it's really subliminal marketing. It's really relaxed, but it's it's really authentic because it's real to my lifestyle. And I, and I think that that's definitely key. Think longer term, please, guys, because that's crucial. It really is. It makes such a difference. No, really, really we are taking it. notes, Naomi. We are taking. <laughs> yeah, no, we're yeah, exactly. We're we're all like, listen. It, it's so fascinating to talk to to, to so many different people in, in one conversation because you get so many perspectives and point of views. And I think that this has created so much value. Um, Naomi, thank you so kindly. Um, you know, if people oh. want to follow you or they want to, they want to find you, uh, what's the best places for them to do that? Well, probably first of all, my uh, Instagram and it's on here, Naomi K. Eisted, but you can find me Naomi K. Eisted on Twitter, Naomi K. Eisted official on Facebook. Uh, my blog, my luxury blog is um, ultimatelifestylist.com. Um, and yeah, or just Google me. <laughs> Yeah, you're everywhere. Listen, don't like you know. Everywhere, what I mean? you can't everywhere. get everything. She's everywhere, and, and 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 such a such an absolute lovely human being. So, um, Naomi, thank you so kind for being on today. Thank um, you so much. So much both of you. It's been a pleasure, and hopefully we can connect um in person in uh, Milan at some time or Italy. Yes, hopefully, yes. Or wherever we do. London yeah. or Canada. <laughs> yeah, Canada, or London. I mean, like if you Google Naomi, you might see a few photos of us here and there. So. Well, it's likely you'll find me anywhere in the world. I'm randomly here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, it's nice to do these. Thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. You're very Thanks. welcome. Bye. 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 Thank bye. You.